Hello Golf WRX. We're going to have an interesting discussion on a way that you can analyze your swing. Whenever you watch golf on TV, you see all different types of styles. You play golf with your friends. You see all different swing shapes. Some are effective, some not so much. What makes a swing individualistic? Well, from what we found from our research was the fact that the shape at which your hands move, the center of your hands, which we call the hub, is your own swing signature. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, let's start where this all came from. A lot of research has been done on the golf swing over the years, but none better than Dr. Stephen Nesbitt, who did research for both the United States Golf Association and the National Golf Foundation. Currently, he and I have designed our own swing analysis system and software and that's where a lot of this information comes from. If you go to jacobs3d.com which is our website you can see all of his technical papers and things like that and it's super complex and it's my job to simplify it for all of us here at Golf WRX. Well one of the big things we found was the path at which your hands take, the center of the hands which we call the hub is unique to each individual and if you learn to analyze that you can assess your game pretty quickly so this is a picture of a golf club on the downswing and you can see the club heads moving around all the way to the finish here's the shaft and then here's the path at which the center of the hands were take are taking and you can see it's not quite circular you can see there's all different types of shapes this one is a little more egg shaped and I'm going to suggest to you that you have your own unique one. So let's figure out how we can help you f find yours and assess whether it's helping your swing or trying to make up for some weaknesses. Well, let's give you a real basic example. Let's pull this middle handicap golfer up and let's talk about what he looks like right before impact. So you could use your smartphone or your iPad, take a video of your swing, it's got super slow motion these days and you could stop it at any point so let's stop this golfer here and let's take note of some of the characteristics of his swing and what we like people to look for is that point between the hands which we call the hub and then what type of path it has to travel on in the next portion of the swing and when we look at this golfer we notice that the club head still has a lot of ground to cover the club head has to swing out towards the ball, yet his hands have a lot of ground to cover too. If he just let this club head swing out towards the ball from there and his hands stayed in place, or if his hands move on a curve up and in, he's probably going to miss the ball. And working with this golfer, and this is when he came for his first lesson, I remember him telling me that he hit a lot of shots heavy or hit the ground first, fat shots. And the more he tried to release the club and follow instruction of what he was supposed to do, the more that the club head hit the ground first. So because of where his hands are at this point, the only way that he can make contact with the ball would be if he moved, used his body, used his arms. We'll talk about the body in a second. But he has to move his hub on a very straightish, flat line down this way to be able to get the club head to the ball. I'm going to suggest to you that's not the best route for a golfer to take. That's not what the high-end players are doing. We'll get to that. But the point I'm making is that for this particular golfer, he had no choice but to learn how to move this hub flat and down. And to him, it felt like he was flipping or pushing really hard with his trail arm to be able to do it. Now, why is this happening? Well, Look at his body. So now you want to start identifying all the joints of the body, the ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, the midline of his body, where his rib cage would be. And you'll notice that the way that his body is, is all, all the parts of his body are kind of moving all over the place. And that's what's hurt the delivery of how he's able to move that hub. So obviously body movements have a lot to do with it. But if all things equal, if he kept moving his body this way, he has no choice but to move that hub straight and down to get to the ball. Now let's give you a different example. This is a really great player who's uh, 
came for a couple of sessions, and he's played in nine major championships. And I'll put him side by side. And you'll notice a different body position. You can see that the trail knee, the right knee, isn't as early internally rotated this way. His right foot's more on the ground. And you'll notice that his hands, that hub, has very has already traveled a long way and only has to move up and in a little bit to be able to get that club head to swing out to the ball. This is one of the best iron players I've, I've captured to date for sure. So you can see here he could pull up and in and the path at which he can move this hub can curve more this way, which is a trait of the high end player. When the path of the hub can curve up and in more, what that does is that helps increase club head speed. If you watched our first Golf WRX show, and the reason I made it first was it was a topic of hand speed. And what I tried to point out is that an amateur, a lot of times, will have a higher hand speed than a tour player, yet a tour player will have a tremendous amount more club head speed. Here's an example. Because this golfer has so much ground to make up here, he has to continually make an effort to speed his hands up. Probably won't be able to at some point, but he's going to have to move it a lot faster than this golfer. And when this club moves out and he takes advantage of what he's done so far in the swing, he can increase club head speed. The club moving out will slow his hands down, and he'll register a slower hand speed than this golfer, yet have much more club head speed. So you can see how the joints of the body, how the body's moving, really dictate a lot about what you're doing at the hands or the, or the hub. So people who feel like they're real aggressive with their arms and hands and they can't relax, they might be in a position like this golfer where they have no choice to push hard on the club. And yet this golfer here can do more things that would just pull on the club and allow the club to swing out more. This golfer is going to look much smoother doing it. And you can see how we can assess the movement of that hub, whether it be straight or curving, to help figure that out. In our program, we use something called the Hub Illustrator. And if you have a gears capture of your swing or a 3D motion capture of your swing, we could run the Hub Illustrator and really see what's going on. These are the same two players that we were just looking at, more from the overhead view. And I think the overhead view really exemplifies it even more. You could see that the club head has this amount of ground to cover, and his hands have about that much ground to cover to get the job done. And yet for this golfer, you can see his hands have pretty much completed their journey. They're just gonna move up and in now and be able to increase club head speed. But back to that Hub Illustrator. So here's two different examples. One that we wouldn't recommend, and one of a actually a major champion. Now, what is this? Well, here's what we do with this. We color code it. So let me explain to you what this graphic is. The outside dots are the club head movement. The black and blue represent shafts. And this part here is the movement of the center of the grip, or that hub, that part right there. And we color code it. And green means that the way that it's moving is moving more in a flat or straight line this way. And when it turns red, that means the golfer is curving it more, uh, more and more. So down at the bottom of the swing, right before impact, you could see the red curving is much more like that tour player where they're able to curve the path of the hands up and in and get that club head to swing out more. And in this golfer, this was more of a middle range golfer, you could see how it was green and move flat and straight. And what that's gonna do is not maximize club head speed. So what you can do is video your swing and then start to draw dots. And that's what I explained in my book, Elements of the Swing, how to draw dots and then assess the curving of that hub. And it'll tell you a lot about your swing. Now there is one little point of note that I often recommend for people. And there's a difference between what it's going to look like from the traditional face-on view. So what I mean by that is we're used to looking at a swing like this. This is just an animation of a club coming into impact. This is what we're accustomed to seeing. But it's going to look a lot different and not tell you as much as if you kind of flip the view a little bit 
And what I mean by that is if there was a way that you could analyze your swing by shifting the camera view to be more looking straight down from a higher elevated look, you'll get a much more accurate description of exactly what's happening in your swing. So if we looked at a swing from this perspective, it will look a lot different. And here you can see this was a high-end player. This is actually another different major champion. And you could see the path, the way that that hub is moving and how it's curving more up and in as it comes into contact. So those are some interesting ways that you could start to look at a golf swing differently. And hopefully now you can start looking at your hub path and start to see your swing signature. This is Michael Jacobs. Hope you enjoyed this Golf WRX show.